Hello again. I have taken myself a liberty once more and headed outside for a bit to commune with nature, as the case may be. Uh, it's a rainy day, in case you can't tell. So I figured probably not going to be a lot of people out and about, with the unexpected side effect, of course, being, or the, rather the side effect I should have expected, that everybody's in their goddamn cars, which are really loud and make it hard to film vlogs if I'm walking next to the street too closely. <sighs> but it's nice to go out, because like the thing that depresses me about winter, and I'm not sure if I have seasonal affective disorder as such, but the thing that depresses me is you go outside on an overcast, dreary winter's day, and it's just bare. Like, it's just, it's just, like, dark trees and brown earth and gray and nothing. But you go out <laughs> on a dreary, overcast spring day, and you still get to see this saturated, beautiful color permeating the world. And anyway, that's why spring is objectively better than winter. Which I know is a very controversial statement to make. It's not like every poet on the face of the earth in the Romantic period believed exactly the same thing and said so. <laughs> I don't know. I always feel a little... Because I do have a sort of romantic love of nature in my heart. Not that I necessarily want to spend all my time out in it. And it feels a bit pretentious. Like, it feels a bit, you know, self-absorbed romantic poet waffling on about the overwhelming glory of nature, blah, blah, blah. Uh, while forgetting that nature is also brutal and full of blood and death and unnecessary suffering. But I don't know. I just think trees are neat. <laughs> but yeah. That's my update from the corona crisis, I suppose. There's been a small uptick in hospitalizations in Denmark. Predictably, kind of, after the government announced that finally, because, because we've broken the curve and everything, they were going to open the country up a little bit and let some people go back to work and let, like, little kids especially get back to daycare and stuff so that their parents didn't have to, to do the care work. And then predictably, like, the day of, <laughs> pretty much, news stories came in of, of people, especially like the capital of Copenhagen and, and in the big cities, flooding the outside public spaces, going out, saying, that's fine now, we're allowed. <laughs> and basically, the police had to impose... Not curfew, but um, bans on loitering, basically. You you were allowed to be outside, go around all you please, but you're not allowed to stick around somewhere in a group. So walk through the park, fine. Staying in the park all the time, not fine. Uh, and the funny thing about that is, <clears throat> none of it happens because any one person is stupid. None of it happens because people as a group are stupid. It happens because every single person says to themselves, well, I'm going to be careful, I'm going to keep social distancing rules, and I'm not going to stick around for too long. And every single person does that. Like, every single person does it right. They don't go there with any intent to be reckless. But when enough people do that at the same time, it doesn't matter how conscientious any one person is, ultimately there's going to be too many people, and the natural distance that we keep from each other shrinks the more people are present in a space, and then there you go. And that's the thing I, I kind of, when I look at some of the coverage of like people going back to the beaches and stuff like that, it's not because they're stupid. Like, a lot of them, in the United States, it's people are misinformed and misled and propagandized against by Fox News and the president and, you know, the talking head morons who would like to sacrifice any number of human lives if it means that line go up, please. 
there's that, but people who go there, they're not like, yes, I shall go and defy quarantine because me, 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 necessarily. A lot of them, it's just because, like, they're thinking, okay, well, I will just be careful. I will be responsible. As an individual person, I will make all the right decisions, and then things will be fine. Which is a mindset, it's a neoliberal mindset, but it's also one that doesn't reckon with group dynamics. It's one that doesn't reckon with collective action and the behavior of the group, which is the kind of behavior that you need to reckon with in order to deal with a pandemic. So yeah, that's something to keep in mind. It's like, it's like no one person is ever smart or responsible enough to deal with a crisis like this which is the propaganda that, that neoliberalism has been kind of filling culture with for the past 150 years, is that, no, 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 no. Like, if individuals just make good choices, then things will all, uh, all the things will work out if all the individuals just make good choices. But even when, even if all the individuals were making good choices, which they never are, there are just situations where no amount of individuals making good choices on an individual basis will ever produce the effect that's necessary. <clears throat> like in a pandemic, when you don't need individuals, you need society taking responsibility as a group. And that is not compatible with, you know, with with neoliberal individualism and, and the fetishism of the heroic, the heroic, uh, I'm looking for a word, uh, the heroic everyman, there it is. Sorry about that, raindrops keep falling on my phone. <sighs> so yeah, that, that, that's been on my mind, I guess. Also ice cream, ice cream has been on my mind. Because like, five, six days ago, I was out shopping, I needed some kind of, some comfort food of some kind, because world sucks. And I picked up these, well, ice creams, but on a stick. Are they popsicles? I don't know the American, I guess, I think popsicles are the, like the, the frozen ice thing rather than ice cream. Anyway, popsicles on a stick, uh, vanilla ice cream in the middle, and almond and chocolate coating. And I don't know what it was, but something fucking snapped inside me. And now I crave them at every waking hour of the day. <laughs> Which, I don't know, I guess that was just exactly what I needed, but it's been a week and a half or something, and and I've had plenty. Like, a bit, I've been trying not to, you know, binge on them or anything, but god damn it if I don't still want them. God damn it. <laughs> Ugh, I don't know what it is, but just, like, fucking cho milk, chocolate, and almonds over vanilla ice cream for whatever reason, just took over my soul, and that's been the only snack I've been able to make myself care about for a while now. <sighs> I'm going to try and cook tonight, I think, or maybe tomorrow night, depends, but <sighs> cooking a meal at night, like cooking dinner, real dinner, is something I haven't been able to do for a while. I just haven't been able to get up the, the energy, because, like, I stay up until 5 a.m., because I only wake up at 2 or 3 p.m. And I, I only wake up at 2 or 3 p.m., because when I wake up, I'm tired. Because I sleep for too little, because of anxiety. And that kind of... Like, it's, it's weird to cook dinner when you've only been awake for four hours, you know? <laughs> so that's been hard to do, but I really fucking crave, like, a good chili or a steak or something. Something more substantial, because, like, as it is, I've just been eating sandwiches and stuff, like bread with toppings. And it's just not enough, man. I need a real meal to feel like a person again. And all the restaurants are closed, so I can't outsource it. Which I'm fine with, 
Well, I mean, I could order, but you can only really order pizza or Chinese food here. Both of which are very good, but neither of which are the kind of meal that I crave. Because they're very filling and nice, but I need like a like a real, like just a meal that feels that feels like dinner, you know. That's the feeling I need right now. The feeling of dinner. It's not just the food. Uh, fortunately, I can give myself that feeling if I put in a bit of work. I don't wanna, but I do want to. But I don't wanna, but I do want to. I suspect this sentiment is probably relatable at this time in human history. <laughs> I don't know if I had a point to make. I just wanted to take you on a walk, I guess. Have you guys been able to take walks? I hope you have. Like, I'm lucky that there's no curfew or, like, a, an actual stay-inside order as such. We haven't needed one. We've just been told, like, don't go to work and close all the restaurants and public spaces. But other than that, just be outside all you want, if, if you want. Nobody has wanted to. Because we do have, I think to a greater degree than the Americans, we do have that group mentality. Like that, that, like that necessary social cohesion. That says, hey, maybe think along the lines of, like, how would other people behave? You know, if everyone behaved the same way that you do even if they do it very carefully and responsibly, what happens? And a lot of the time, the answer is what happens is, well, things get worse, not better. Uh, this is a construction site. They're doing something. They're building a building. I'm, I'm next to um, a great church here in town. A beautiful church is up way up, up, to, up top on a hill, and the view from the bell tower is apparently absolutely fucking amazing. And it's ancient; it's been here for like several hundred years. But now they're building something—a big concrete something something next to it. I don't know what that is. I'm kind of curious, actually. Construction has continued through the quarantine, weirdly, which I would not have expected. I would have thought like building sites and stuff like that, surely. Lots of close contact there, but no, they've continued. Which has apparently been fine. So I guess that's nice. Anyway, I'm gonna go home now. Wait, no, I'm gonna go shopping and buy some stuff so I can have some dinner. And then I'm gonna go home. I guess see you guys later.